Hey guys, hope you're having a great Thanksgiving week. Um, I'll be heading out pretty soon in uh, about tomorrow. So I figured I might as well pull up some questions from my inbox and get them answered while I'm at it. So um, I've collected just a few questions um, dating to about a week before and now I've cleared out everything. So any questions that do come in, I think, you know, if this works out, this could be a regular kind of segment um, that happens weekly where I take uh, some questions and, and try to answer them um, as best as possible. So let's go ahead and start with the first question from FlavaFlav24. Hello there, I'm a player of Wizard101 and I can't help but notice that you and your friends are amazing at the game and know a lot about it. I've read your profile and sa it said you work on Wizard101 projects. I have watched many Wizards videos and I was wondering maybe if you wouldn't mind making a video or guide on how to level up faster and what the main storyline quests are and the deck and card strats. I know you must get a lot of messages but if you maybe could give this a read over and see what you think. Thanks for your time. Well, Thanks Flava Flav for the message and the comments. Um, I know in the near future I will be recording the storyline progression for Zaf Zafaria. Um, as I take my first Battle Blood through, he's the um, he's the first wizard I've ever created, but he's kind of been left abandoned, uh, tending to his couch potato garden. I mean, that's all he's good for nowadays, as I've been doing more PvP with uh, Battle Blood 2.0. Um, and I will, since I'll be recording it, it'll be implemented into a playlist of multiple videos, so that when you're going when you're looking at the entire story of um, Zafaria it's not just one entire long movie but instead you can bookmark or favorite different sections um, within the adventures uh, and through different videos that is um, there's also going to be some vocal commentary on these so you don't necessarily have to watch these and enjoy it at the same time uh, you can just go ahead and listen to it in the background as you're playing your own Wizard 101 um, adventure and you know if that if I enjoy working on that kind of project I might do the same thing for death so then you can see it from another school's perspective next question I have is from uh, vwiz101 says I have a question how can I get my pet to have 5% defense plus 10% defense or 6% accuracy 5% defense and 5% attack What's pet, what pet is needed and what's next um, what I need for it. Well, since you're looking to combine different pet talents together on a single pet, what you have to do first is hatch two pets together. And what you generally want to do is find pets that have spell proof and spell defy for your first example, um, or sharp shot, spell defy, and pain giver for your second example. You can find more information over at petgnome.com which provides a list of the first generation pets that have these abilities in their DNA. Um, certain snacks won't affect what manifests, so it's really up to you to be persistent and to be patient um, in farming and hatching. I mean, you have to expect a bunch of failures to pop up and that not everything will work out right away. You know, it could be two weeks, could be two months before you get your pet. Heck, it could even be a whole year but I don't think I've heard of any failure stories that have uh, extended to that long, you know, at least give it three months of work. Um, that's about the average time. Well, actually, it takes about a month, a month and a half for TBC to actually develop like a new generation pet that we uh, agree to use in PvP. So, you know, keep in mind, no pain, no gain. So thanks for the question, V. Um, Gavin Lifebringer asked, Hey Kevin, first let me say I'm a new viewer and I came across your videos on YouTube and you inspired me to look at PvP differently and try to enjoy it more. So just wanted to thank you for that. My question is, I noticed in your videos TPC, seems, TPC pets seem to cast Sprightly a lot. I recently got a Defender Pig with May Cast Unicorn, Sprightly, Spellproof, and Spell Defy. You might say, wow, great pet, which I did, but sadly I'm running into a small problem. Its spells really aren't triggering where on other pets with Sprightly it would trigger about three to two, two to three times in a row easily. I've had him for a few days and I've only had two Sprightly trigger in the same three rounds together once. I was wondering if pet stats played a role in how often Sprightly and other Maycasts are triggered. 
and then he lists his pet stats and he says thank you for your time Rob aka Gavin Lightbringer well Rob uh, I have some questions for you first of all that maybe you can answer in the comments of this section but um, where were you observing where your sprightlies were happening were you in PvP or were you in PvE and as a sub question to that how many different enemies did you have in each of these battles um, sprightly along with the other may cast talents are all battle dependent and they're actually at a fixed rate so whatever you do inside or outside of the battle itself you don't really have a bigger chance of um, getting a sprightly that per se I mean there are triggers to this and I'll explain it in a, in a little bit but um, you know whether your pet has all 50 on strength intelligence uh, agility etc through power if it has just 50 points there or 250 points for each of those stats it doesn't matter sprightly will still have the same rate on either of those pets now getting to what I may meant by triggers um, sprightly and other may casts are battle dependent and what that means is that certain events have to happen within the fight before there's a chance for that may cast to go off so it's really based on what you do within the battle uh, for you to get sprightly rather than you know feeding your pet certain snacks or raising certain stats which is basically a myth right there um, and you can find out more specific info on sprightly over at my blog um, towards the top of the line there's a bar that says advanced pets info and you just have to look for a post that call, that's called sprightly mechanics and that'll explain um, that'll get dig into the nooks and crannies of how that pet talent works so good luck on that, Gavin, and uh, hope things work out for you. I believe, you know, all you have to do is fight more enemies, uh, be attacked by more spells, and you should be seeing Sprightly and May Cast Unicorn cast more often than uh, than what you've ob first observed. So good luck to you on that, and let me know how that goes. Next qu next person to ask question is Born to Kill owns you. Hey, first of all, English is not my English is not so good. <laughs> That's all right. I look at your video for about two months, but I've never seen a death class on PvP. Is death class not so good in PvP? If so, which class should I pick? Balance or Storm? Well, wait about a few more weeks, Born to Kill, and uh, you'll be seeing uh, TPC play on some other schools, and we actually do implement Death and Myth, and the, the ladies are in their pyromancers. So just keep watching this YouTube feed or this YouTube channel, and you'll get to get an idea about how great these schools can be. You know, personally, I think every school is um, is great for PvP. Every school has a special role, and really, what makes them shine, you know, and what really brings them out is the way that you use your school or the way that you play it. So, you know, whether you're in a team or if you're in a solo one v one. You know, it depends on your deck builds, really. It's not about the school per se. Um, I mean, Storm Wizards can beat anyone from their own school up to ice and vice versa. So it really depends, again, how you play your style and how you play your card. There's no, I don't really think there's a major imbalance in certain schools. I mean, some people may disagree, which is fine, but... I really think that KI has made, has done a great job with each of these schools and honestly I think I would have fun PvPing on any of them. Next we have to Avaro <laughs> X619 who asks, "Hey, did you get any of the new gear in the crown shop yet or at least pets?" Well, actually um I know that TPC and I have not bought any of the new gear within the crown shop after Safaria came out. I mean, we learned that, unfortunately, most of the crafted and the dropped gear, they sort of have disappointing stats, you know, compared to the stuff that you would get from the Waterworks, for example, or the Tower of the Elephant. I mean, heck, I'm still even using my crafted level 55 gear from Celestia while questing through Stavaria. So, it really depends on, you know, what kind of stats you're looking for. And I know that for my damage, for my accuracy, I would... I'm much better off sticking with the uh, Celestian gear that I crafted, but you know, to all their, um, to each their own. And as for the pets, well, we received a couple of drops from the Zafarian bosses. I know Ronin received both the leopard and the skink, 
but he, you know he's not going to use it for any kind of long-term plans. Um, these pets don't really come with cars, and so we figure we might as well invest time and energy and resources into developing other pets that can give us you know benefits in the battle, which are these cards. Uh, next question from Epic Death Wizard: What is a recycler? Is it a type of wizard? Now, Epic Death Wizard wizard is um, referring to my profile page where in my channel it shows that I have f you know five names wizards and then my last wizard is called a recycler so he's probably wondering you know is this a different school that we don't know about well actually a recycler is actually a, co a term coined by me that isn't really a r real wizard or a school at all in fact this is a slot that never gets to become a true wizard what I mean by that is that I made this character slot so then I can actually recycle it, quote unquote. Um, for example, it's never going to be you know a set guy or a girl. It might change genders. It might change names. It'll you know change schools here and there. The reason why I'm doing this is because when I've run out of hatching slots, let's say that I've let's rewind a little bit and say that I've hatched about six pets already you know one on each wizard and now they have to wait about 12 or 24 hours depending on your subscription or crowns um, payment plan now I have to wait for that timer to expire before I can hatch again well if I recycle one of my wizards that means I completely delete them after sending all my gold snacks reagents pets um, whatever is on there that I need for the next wizard I get rid of everything into the shared bank, delete that wizard, and create a new one. Now, you're probably wondering, oh wow, that's a great idea. Now he, that one has a new hatching timer and it can uh, create a new pet, you know, assuming that I have the gold. But you're probably wondering, well, how do you get into the hatchery then from just level one, you know, or do you have to quest all the way? You don't necessarily have to quest all the way. What you do is you find a friend that's willing to help you that's, you know, one of that's a really good friend I would say someone trustworthy and reliable and patient enough to deal with this um, and basically you ask them to friend your level one or your new wizard they would go into the hatch or your friend would go into the hatchery or even just the pet pavilion and then you would pour it in um, same thing with the auction to get to the bazaar you know I would have a friend take me there sell all my stuff right there so I have about 50k gold on the new wizard then I go into the hatchery and then that, that's my seventh pet and then you can just keep repeating that over and over as, as long as you have enough gold. <laughs> so just remember to send all your items, all your pets and whatever you've made or transferred to the new wizard back in the shared bank before you delete it and you know check your treasure decks um, or check your treasure cards I mean and check your uh, your inventory very very carefully. You do not want to end up losing a pet or or mega snacks through this process. So thanks for the question, Epic That Wizard. Wizard. <laughs> uh, Super Dragon Riders asks, "Where did you guys get Defender Pigs?" Well, depending on what month you redeem them on, the Defender Pigs actually come from the twenty dollar Rite Aid gift cards. Uh, if you're at least in the USA. Um, or you can hatch, I mean, to get this pet, you can also hatch with someone who has one. The only catch is that that pet's not going to be first generation. So it might have a, a jumble of weird talents in its pool, in its DNA, basically. So through that, you've got to be careful. I mean, it's really up to you what you want to do. Um, but again, if you want to find out when the Defender Pig comes out onto the gift card, um, what you can do is buy the $20 gift card ahead of time and then wait and watch the wizard101.com official site and if under the gift card section it should say what pets are coming you know either this month or the months to come so for example right now if you looked at the gift card page at wizard101.com it should explain what pets you would get if you redeemed it this month and it should give you an a preview of the next pets if you redeem it in December or January so go check that out and you know I don't think Defender Pig is listed there right now but give it some time you know it's, I think it's about a three-month cycle before it comes back so maybe it'll 
it'll be shown um, in February, maybe March. Just keep your eye out for that. And last question from the Geometry 98. Hello, KBB. I was wondering if you could tell me where you got your wand. It would be of great use if you can respond. Thanks and have a nice day. Well, I'm not really sure what, what what wand he's referring to, but if it is that blue curved dagger that I'm now carrying, that's called the Blue Raptor Sword. And I've actually uh, stitched that on top of my Life Force Sword, which I got from the Crown Shop. Um, where you get the Blue Raptor Sword from is, well, I actually got mine from playing King's Isle Free Games um, over at Kings or over at KIFreeGames.com. And we have, and I got happened to get a score high enough that gave me that code for that sword. Now, I understand that some of the loot, loot tables have been nerfed, so I don't know if this sword still drops. I know there are a lot of great items out there that stopped dropping. I can't really guarantee if you'll get it or not. So that's that, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and hope that hopefully that answered all of your questions. Um, those of you that asked. And again, thanks for the comments. Thanks for checking out the videos. You guys have been amazing support. And uh, it, this community has just been awesome. You know, just Wizard 101 in itself. So, anyways, I'm going to be signing off now. I'll probably be uh, setting up another video to show some tutorials on some pet tools that you can use. So, keep an eye out for that. Anyways, have a great day, guys. Have a great Thanksgiving. Because I did release this. Uh, Thanksgiving is in a few days from now. Um, so be safe, be well, and uh, we'll see you in the spiral. Peace.